Michael Marr, what's happening? What's going on, man? Hey, you know it's that time of the day. It's I haven't had I haven't had just straight up bourbon in a while, so that's what I'm going for. Is that what you're going for? So first of all, before we get this thing kicked off, let me go ahead and, and explain to everyone that is watching this bad boy live or that will be watching it in replay what Drinking Buddies is. Drinking Buddies is me, you, people out there, one of my buddies, and today, today it's Michael Maher, and me and us having a drink together and kicking it kicking it this isn't it's kicking not it. about business it's about whatever whatever the hell i feel like talking about <laughs> um, so those right. of you that, that have asked me i've got messages and be like yo when when is the show what time when i don't know when it, it's whenever the hell i feel like it so but one thing is you guys will know be at 5 p.m when we do it it just so happens i've done it a few days this week maybe i'll do it tomorrow maybe i won't i don't know depends on how i'm feeling if i'm having a great day Maybe I will from if I'm having a bad day. Maybe I will too. I don't know. Yeah. But today, <laughs> today I got my buddy Michael. Or Michael, what's up? When we get this thing, as we get this thing kicked off, tell the fam because we, we we do got to tie a little bit of business in. Just tell them about your business right quick. You got ten, ten yeah. seconds. Go. So I've got a, pr a prints manufacturing company where we manufacture prints. Uh, yeah. Prints. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My, um, I have a, a service agency called Cartology, and our whole whole essence is just helping brands uh, get visibility and grow revenue on Amazon. That's the whole thing. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. I love now, it. To, now to what I care most about. Although you're awesome at your job and you're busy, your companies. Okay, we all know that. Great. What? Blah blah blah. Right. Let's move on. What the hell are you drinking? I'm drinking some Weller Special Reserve. Nice. Now, I don't know if I'm going to impress you or you're going to be disappointed in me. Um, a lot of people are probably going to be a, just a little bit disappointed in me um, because no whiskey today. What are you doing? Oh, dude. Hey. Oh, gin. You're drinking just gin straight up? I'm drinking. No, check this out. So this is let me give a shout out to Montgomery Distillery in beautiful, picturesque Missoula, Montana, um, one of our business and bourbon live event sponsors. They're amazing. If you get up to, to Missoula or if you can to buy their stuff, they have just amazing spirits. Anyway, I'm, I got a little palm. Oh, okay. Okay. So I got to, I'm going to help them make it a little bit healthy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say? Sugar, spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Yes, indeed. Got my, new bourbon glass. I don't know if you know about this, but this came from uh, my my personal pottery artiste, Kathleen. Thank you again. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. And it is in the, the Buckeye colors. Oh, okay. Uh, Buckeye colors, sign of a beautiful piece. This is now my favorite glass to drink out of. I have this uh, glass that's got a little chip on it, and it works just fine. Make sure you don't cut your lip. Hey, virtual cheers. Virtual cheers. I got to put some in my glass first. But yeah, no, yeah, jinx it. Put something in the glass. I got to get an ice cube real quick. All right. Way to be prepared. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're only live. Let me go through, let's, let's check in and see who's who's uh, who's kicking it with us. All right. I got my ice cube. I'm back. Woo. All right. Pour it up. I was, I've been drinking a lot of wine recently, actually, and, I, and I've really been enjoying that. Oh, you're a fancy lad now. That yeah, you know, pinkies up. Don't put that pinky up. This smells good. Larry, what's happening? Cheers to you, brother. Double Larry G, my, my, my man, Double G, Greg Ginsky is, is live with us. One of my oldest, dearest friends. What's happening, brother? Um, Rod, my man, Rod, what's happening? Rod, the greatest beard in marketing. Uh, okay, let's get this cheers on. Here we go. Virtual cheers, cheers. Clink. All right. Hello. Shout out to Marvin. Old school gin and juice. Gee, I ain't crazy, man. Old school. <laughs> James E. Collins in the house. What's going on, James E.? Thanks for joining. All right. So, Michael, what's before we kind of get into some of the fun topics of the day, man, I want to know what's going on in your world up in the natty because you're up in there in, in Cincinnati. How you feeling? How's the fam? How are things going? 
I am so blessed. I'm so blessed. Um, my business, my entire team is remote. So day to day is not, has not affected me from a work standpoint. Yeah. Um, I, I have a house, I have food, I have water. I even have the luxury of having alcohol. Uh, I love my wife. I love my daughter. We've got a cool dog. So like, we're all just chilling at home right now. My wife's, um, uh, Basically told to, you know, she's a pharmaceutical rep and she was told not to go out in the field. It's kind of in the in the thick of where, you know, people would be. Oh, pharmaceutical rep? Oh, what, what pharmaceuticals? What, what, what are we talking uh, about? No, no, no. She, um, <laughs> <laughs> she works for a company called Novo Nordisk. Yeah. It's all, it's all diabetes mostly focused. Damn out. it. I can't, I can't do nothing with it. <laughs> is, there, is there a black market for that, for diabetes medicine? Well, uh, my brother at one point uh, sold his uh, blood sugar test strips on Craigslist at one point. Um, that's illegal. You should not be doing that. But um, that was a while ago. Uh, it's kind of a long story, but he was in a coma for 30 days, um, almost almost 30 days. Uh, came oh, out of it and ended up having no, you know, long term damage. Um, but his blood sugar went so super high because he wasn't tracking it. He's a type wow. one diabetic. Um, so the businessman to me, did he make money off of him? I, just, I, just uh, I think it was an exchange for other paraphernalia. So I want to <laughs> say, yeah. What, what, what is what is other paraphernalia? Uh, <laughs> you know, illegal substances. I, I believe maybe icky ooey, maybe a little or, or, or money, or maybe money for beer or something like that. At okay. The time. All right. as, long, as long as he wasn't out on the streets like, hustling uh, diabetes. Yeah, <laughs> He has a whole, he has a whole show called Dave Marcoma Show where he um, he talks about uh, his whole uh, you know running with that. Um, hey hey, let's give a shout out. Kathleen is on. Cheers, Kathleen. Cheers, Keith is on. Cheers, my friends. Let me know what you guys are drinking. And it may not be five where you are at, but it's it's five here. That's all that matters. So yep. pour pour a little something in that pour a little something in that glass. Let us know what you're drinking. We're gonna be enjoying it. So, so check this out. I'm one drinking of, caramel, caramel sauce. One of the things. I, how's it? First of all, give us a, a review. You and I, we actually shared that. We shared that in Cincinnati, didn't we? When I was up there last. No, we didn't have one. Okay. No. Give us a review. What do you think? Oh, of the Weller Special Reserve. Yeah. It is so good. Um, it and it's not. It's not that expensive. There are some bourbons. You and I talked about this. Like Blanton's is super hard to find. Yeah. And I live like an hour and a half, two hours from um, from uh, no, I didn't. Uh, just being asked about if I fed my dog, which I did not, of course. Why would I? Hey, there's a show going on here. I mean, I mean, <laughs> you um, don't get. You don't get. Um, you don't get Michael Strahan show when people are popping. Hey, um. <laughs> no, hey, what's going on, man? What you doing? Where's the respect? Um, Drinking buddies, we get no respect. I love, I, I love this Weller. It is a solid, solid, solid bourbon, and um, it's easier. It's somewhat easier to find, but it's way less expensive than Blanton's. Like, I'm like two hours from the production facility. How much? Uh, you can get a bottle for like forty five bucks. That's pretty good for some Weller. Now, the thing is, you just have to know who's going to have it. So like yeah. the liquor store here in Cincinnati, where um, when you show up, you know when the delivery is. It's on like a Monday morning or Monday afternoon. So you yeah. show up and you can't just say, "Hey, you have any good bourbons?" You have to be like, "Hey, do you have any Weller? Hey, do you have any Buffalo Trace?" Oh, yeah. hold on. So check this out. Yes, because I was at a local package store. Did they call them package stores up there too? Uh, when you get alcohol. Yeah. All right. No. Down in the South package. But store. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, and they a lot of them keep because I, I guess the well Weller Special Reserve is pretty popular, yes. so they usually keep it in the back. Let's give a couple shout outs. Christopher is drinking Woodford Reserve. Cheers, my friend. Oh, cheers, Christopher. One of my dear friends, Forrest Mouton. Forrest Mouton is is watching us live. Forrest, thanks for 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 popping in. Jamesy says that that is only twenty five bucks down here, so it sounds like I need to send it to you. Oh, I just got, I just added more to my list. Yep, that's true. You're supposed to send me that list of the stuff that you want that we have. Down here. Let's see. Blanton's. John says Blanton's on a cigar, my man. So, are you drinking Blanton's and have your cigar right now? I, I need, I need to, I need to know. 
That's what's up. Love I it. I would love to get a hold of some Antique 107. I actually met someone when I was in Atlanta uh, a few months ago, and you were not. You were, I believe, in Texas or something. Yeah, and and you know how I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Riding, and, riding and riding. I was at... Um, uh, I was at uh, Duke and King and Duke. Yes, my and spot. I had, I had the, up, King and Duke, and I had the 107 there, and it was great. But I need to find a bottle of that. Hey, a um, couple shout outs. Hanson has joined. Hanson just got off work and said, "Hey, I got to get on this." But he's drinking water. Hanson, I'm disappointed, <laughs> bro. I'm disappointed. Oh, Next, <laughs> what's up, Hanson? Gian says yes. That's what's up. My man has the Blantons and the cigar going right now. So um, before I ask you this next question, um, sh make sure I want to make sure you guys know that this whole Drinking Buddies, this is brought to you by Day Drinking. Day Drinking, that's our daily business and bourbon podcast, daily dose of inspiration, motivation, education. Michael has heard every single one of our episodes. We launched that, uh, I don't know, 60, 70 days ago, something like that. I don't know. We're up to... I think 60 episodes and it's killing it. It's doing great. It's five minutes. Make sure you guys listen to it. All right. And if you like it, like I said yesterday, if you like it, please give us a rating. Give us a review. If you don't like it, kick rocks. Do not rate it. Hey, how Go does that help? How do, how do reviews impact uh, visibility for the podcast? Um, so, you know, just like social media, this part, these podcast distribution System services were like Apple and Spotify. They work on algorithms. And so the, the more reviews you get, like, for example, when we launched Business and Bourbon, the original Business and Bourbon podcast, which, by the way, we have a new episode out this week. Make sure you all listen to that. Um, when we launched that, we reached Apple's top 200 overall and top 100 business like within wow. a month. But that was largely due to a lot of the people that are on this, that are watching this stuff right now, that rated it and reviewed it and just really kicked our kicked the algorithm and the hyperdrive so that we could get better traction. But so that stuff is important. So if you guys are doing podcasts out there, know that, um, yeah, get your friends, get your family, get your mama in there. Make sure everybody gives you a review or rating because it's going to yeah. help with the algorithm. I might be starting a podcast soon. So, you know, you might. just figure it might be good to know. What you mean, might? I might be definitely starting a podcast soon. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, hey, so my man Michael here is the biggest Prince fan you will ever, ever meet. Yeah. And he's a singer. He, he, he's, a, he's a singer musician. So, um, what's your favorite? What's your favorite Prince song? Uh, um, uh, probably one of my all-time favorites is "If I Was Your Girlfriend." How's that? If I was your girlfriend. Would you remember? Tell me how Prince? Yeah, let him sing it. Oh. <laughs> Actually, it's his alter ego, Camille. It's his alter ego, Camille. That's like his higher pitch voice. That was, that's, that's. Uh, oh, that, um, that is? Yeah, that's hey, it. Shout out to who we got? Who we got? Brittany McCormick is oh. drinking. The, she's, bring, she's drinking the captain. I, oh, she loves like Captain Morgan. Do you know who Brittany is? You're gonna tell me. Brittany McCormick is my VP of business development. Oh, Brittany, what's happening, Brittany? Brittany, yeah. Ronald knows you. I do. I do. I just uh needed to be reminded, but I do know you, Brittany. Oh, Christopher Gray said he's starting his second glass. My man. You better catch up. I need to catch up. <laughs> Boy, I didn't I thought I was gonna get some stuff done tonight, but I'm really gonna get it done. All right. Uh let's see. Let's see what else we got going on here. Checking in. Let me know uh, what y'all drinking. Prince songs. Uh, there's a song called Endorphin Machine, uh, and it is awesome. Oh, that's, that, that sounds like a B-side. It is. -side. It's from The Gold Experience, which was one of his last albums yeah. that had to be put out under the, um, under the symbol. But that gold experience, dude, that album is so, so incredible. And on Endorphin Machine, he just like, he shreds and it's so good. Dude, that that is way too deep cut for me. Like, I'm pur purple rain. <laughs> Would you please look at this mother next to me from Mo Booty to Peru got keys. I told you he was going to sing. <laughs> I'm talking about his, his uh, ex-wife now, Maite. Yeah. Uh, talking about how she's 
got more uh, booty than Peru has keys. <laughs> that was funny how you said that. Say it again. That was like the booty. He said his wife <laughs> had such great booty, more booty than Peru even has small islands uh, that are off the coast of the country. Keys. That's that's why I like you, man. The deep cut references. So hey, I'm asking everybody because we're in this this um, quarantine sort of situation, and everyone, with the exception of Nick, who apparently Nick Nelson, who was on yesterday, apparently he doesn't watch TV like the rest of us. What are you streaming? All the time. What's good? What are you streaming? Oh, what am I streaming? Nick is cold, right? He was in his basement. He was wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Bro, it's 80 degrees outside. <laughs> uh, I don't know what Nick's doing in his basement, but yeah. I am streaming nothing but curb your enthusiasm right now. Oh, one of my all time favorites. It seeks me out so hey. hard. Who's down there with who's down with with LD, my man LD? I need yeah, to know. We're on season oh. six right now. We're watching it in reverse. So we went through season eight. Um, and then we went through season seven, finished it. Now we're going back. So we're in season six right now. Yeah. yeah right, I'm right when um JB Smooth comes in and man, he oh the blacks. He's the <laughs> yeah, blacks. Blacks. That'd be like yeah. my name was Larry Jew, you know? <laughs> it's crazy. And Listen. I'm, I'm telling, for those of you that do not watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, you, you got to fix that. You got to. You, you, you have to watch it. It's it's some of the best comedic television in the history of television. It is uncomfortable, but it's funny uncomfortable. Let's give a shout out real and quick. You know each situation because you've been in the situations. You have been in those situations, which is why. Yeah, some of those situations are crazy, though. My man Marvin is on the Jameson 12. Cheers, respect. Marvin, hold on. No, <laughs> Marvin went from the Diplomatico rum to now he's on the Jameson 12. My man. <laughs> My man, man. Who is getting it done? Let's Chris clap for that. Out. Meanwhile, Michael's still babysitting his first drink. <laughs> oh, like a G. All right. Hey, you know what? I got a really distracting from my own babysitting going. I know. I got a really nice bottle of tequila for my birthday that my wife got me. Uh -huh. It is uh, Avion Reposado. Very nice. It would have. It would have been the Anejo had COVID nineteen not hit. <laughs> she kind of ran out of some time. That my birthday is tw the twenty first, so it hit right in in there. What is that? This is the um, Ka. Who knows this? Who knows this out there? I know some of y'all. No, this this is this is supposed to be real. I'm not much of a tequila guy, but this is supposedly really good. Are you in the mezcal? Uh, I'm not a big smoky person, so I don't drink a ton of mezcal. But great story about the tequila I got uh, on my birthday. I was uh, drinking some of it. Uh, and I'm just, I'm pretty clumsy. So I'll like knock into things and knock things over. And I got a little tremor. Um, my wife calls the shakes and I'm all good though. But no, I'm check that, bro. But I'll, but I'll, no I'll knock stuff over. And so I knock this really nice tequila over on the counter. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I going to do? So I go and get a straw and I'm trying to suck it up from the counter. But when I suck <laughs> it up, the tequila hits the back of my throat. And so I'm over here going, <coughs> <laughs> but I, I got most of it up, I think. What you do is you squeegee it off into a glass or something, man. I tried that and it was not. Or I'm, you just take your rag and wipe it up and call it a loss. You're okay. You, know, I, you know, just wipe it up. It was hey, my idea. She wasn't the one that made me do it. Shout outs real quick. Okay, Christopher says, Christopher, respect, bro. He's he's on season five of Luther. Luther is legit. For those of y'all that have not that coming. oh Idris Elba. Oh and Idris, okay. yes, and so he plays this detective um over in, in Britain, and yeah, it's intense. It's intense, and he's kind of like he's an intense guy, isn't he? He's kind of torn. Although I will tell you, I'll let y'all know that my um my massage therapist says that it just ain't got nothing on me. He's oh. my massage therapist is like, yo, you need to be an actor. And I'm like, well, you know, you paid him, right? I did. I did. Okay. Just, just, just making sure. Okay. So Christopher says season five of Luther on Amazon. Check for, 
I co-sign that. Luther is one glass player. number three. Christopher, how are you doing that? I need more ice. So tell Greg, Greg can kiss my ass. How about that, Ginsky? How about you do that? <laughs> you're supposed to be drinking with us. If you're not drinking with us, Greg, then it's probably not much fun for you. Christopher, I just want you to know that I've got mad respect for you. I'm gonna find you out on LinkedIn and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna connect. Hey, y'all make sure if you're not connected to, to Michael, connect to this dude. Um, he's helping brands out there, man, get on Amazon to be su successful. Right now, a lot of us are looking at, hey, how do we grow um, revenue? You know, how do we, we need, we got to explore some new ways to, to generate revenue here with everything that's going on. And we got to recover. Yeah. Um, so many of my clients I'm talking to, that's what those are the, these are the conversations we're having. Like we're trying to get out and be aggressive right now. And we're thinking about what is our recovery plan? So um, for a lot of brands out there that are smaller brands that maybe hadn't thought about like, yo, I should be on Amazon. You should. Um, and this dude, cause I don't want to just speak for you, but you, you can speak to that better than I can. I think the, the, the main, like there's a, there's a lot of BS that's out there. Um, I mean, not on any subject, but especially when it comes to Amazon, we've got the, the gurus that are, um, spouting off about, you know, I think uh, I coined the phrase entrepreneur porn. Was that me? Nah, that no. Hold uh, on, my lawyer's on speed now. <laughs> <laughs> I know your lawyer. He's on that my speed down now. That shit is trademark now. <laughs> I'm, calling, I'm calling him first. Um, yeah, so. Uh, By the way, so y'all know, yes, entrepreneur porn, trademark. Y'all got A. Hey, go use it. Test me if you want to. Test me if you want to. Yeah, hey, I'll just let you know. That this is my third live event this week. Is that crazy? Uh, it is. I it's just Wednesday. went live. What day is it? It's Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday. I just went live with someone at four. Oh, so what am I doing? And then Monday, I went live on this uh, Facebook page because uh, for a, an organization here in Cincinnati because we were talking about remote work. Yeah. yeah. My whole team's remote. But I think what, there's a lot of BS out there, but when it comes down to it on Amazon, You've got an audience that is ready to buy. Amazon makes it super easy for them to buy. And they trust. They trust Amazon. So if you can access that network of people that trust Amazon, you're, you're in. No doubt. So, so hey, I, got, I got Robert out there saying, I need that shirt. Ron, now hook it up. My dude, I will tell you what you can do to get this. These shirts are limited edition. Like, I haven't... I'm, so for y'all that haven't seen, let me go ahead and show you the back. Let me know. Can you see that fully? Oh, I like that. Day drinking with Ron L. Richards. Drink podcast repeat. All right. So um, for those of you that want a day drinking t-shirt, here's what I need you to do. I need you to, first of all, subscribe to it. Second of all, do a review. Give us a glowing, not a shitty review. If you give me a shitty review, <laughs> I will get a lump of coal in the mail. <laughs> All right. Give us a review um, and give us a business and bourbon review. Let me know. Holler at me. We'll get your shirt out. OK, appreciate appreciate the support. These now just just heads up. We're not We're going to it's probably going to be a few weeks before we get these out just because everything is slow is moving slower now. And um, and the first set of these shirts were just for promotional purposes. But we want to get them out. Word. So I will. So right. you, you support us, we'll support you. I'm uh, moving slow right now to reinforce that point. Everything <laughs> is moving slower. Who's moving slow? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's moving slow right now, so I was illustrating that point. You miss me. He's like, oh my gosh, what's going on with the with my connection? So um Marvin says it's 10:30 where he's at. So Marvin, you probably, I mean, you're like five, what, five hours in though, dude. That's all good. Like, <laughs> or unless you're just getting started, which by the way, it is the middle of the week. So, but it's different. Like we're on quarantine rules. Like this isn't like a normal. Different. You have to normal life. change it up. You have to change it up. Quarant quarantine rules say that it's happy hour every day at five. Like normally, Michael, you know me, I don't, I, I, through the week, I'm I don't typically do I don't do happy hours and that sort of thing. Except now yeah. everything is like crazy. So yeah, yeah. Just, 
I might as well. The world might end tomorrow. Tomorrow, so I'm gonna enjoy a little gin. This is why you 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 stay active and you eat well throughout your whole life, so that when COVID nineteen comes and everyone else is kicking rocks, you can drink <laughs> as much gin and and palm as you want. I agree with you, my friend. Sipping on gin and palm. Sipping. <laughs> Sipping. <it>. Yo. <laughs> Okay, that's, uh, the orange, that's the Orange County version. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Compton is gin and juice. Orange County is gin um, and, and gin palm. Palm. wonderful. Yeah, yeah, man. I agree. Quarantine rules are different. You have like I have been um, working pretty pretty regularly, but I've also been cutting off regularly so that I can spend time with my family. We're watching shows together. We're playing games together. Yeah. Um, we're having some wine during the week. Maybe having a drink during the week. Um, Right now, during the weekends, what we've been doing is just uh, posting up at the end of our driveway, and then our neighbors across the street post up at the end of their driveway, and we just sit and drink and talk to each other. That's what's up, man. That's what my wife's doing right now with our neighbor. Is she really? <laughs> yeah, she's out there because I saw I saw our wine cork saver. When you you know when you drink wine and you've got that rubber cork that you can pull all the air out so the wine doesn't oxidize. I saw that out in the counter, and I'm like, okay, someone's drinking wine. So I went outside and I said, who's drinking wine? My wife had her glass and she was like, who, who wants to know? And I just said, this guy wants to know. That's what's up, Kristen. So check this out, man. Um, your, your business is doing pretty well right now. Um, yes. And um, I mean, you're a leader in your space. Let's, let's, uh, I'd love for you to share maybe a little bit of advice for the folks that are watching and you know there's a lot of people that are hurting let's just straight yeah. up a mm -hmm. lot of people that are hurting and so i mean while this show is about having some fun and sitting down and us bullshitting and having a couple of drinks like i feel like you bring so much value that there that you could maybe share um share a little advice for folks that are that are struggling right now that are hurting right now like what should they be doing what's um, what are maybe some opportunities that they should exploit? Um, where should their heads be at? What do you think? So the, the people that we're serving are, are brands. And there's a lot of ways to approach Amazon. Um, you can be a reseller of goods. You can be a private label person where you're just, you're going and finding goods that are already kind of being made, but you're putting your own trademark on them and then you're, you're selling them on Amazon. But when it comes to brands, were, it's a very unique service because they've already got a brand story. They've already got a product line. And so they're trying to take that in conformance to what Amazon's what Amazon already has in place. And so I think just knowing that a um, couple of small statistics, like 60% of product searches are starting on Amazon. They're not even on Google. They're not even on Bing. They're not in any other um, search engine. They're starting on Amazon. So even from a brand visibility standpoint, if your brand is not represented well, so that means other people could be selling your products um, and, and maybe just selling them at the, at the cheapest possible price, uh, or if people can't even find your brand uh, w when they hear about you or they think about you, you, you lose a lot of credibility. Uh, something that Ron L, I know we've talked about is, is trust and having social proof. And having your product on Amazon is social proof. There are some brands that we've worked with that are wanting to get on a uh, want to get wanting to get on Whole Foods, getting into their mar uh, market in physical stores. And one of the things, even before Amazon had taken over, one of the things they had wanted to see was: Is your product on Amazon, and how well is it rated? What does the packaging look like? What's the marketing look like? So it's social proof to have your product on Amazon, just in the same way that uh, having a blog or having a podcast or a book or anything else like that is social proof. Having your product on Amazon is social proof that uh, it's sold to people and that legitimate people can actually purchase the product. Uh, one, one, of the, one of the best things you could do is just take a look at your brand and say, um, you know, are we really getting the, the most that we can out of our brand? One yeah. of the biggest mistakes I, I've seen brands make um i saw an, an, an article where uh warby parker and bombas talked about why they don't access amazon or why don't they use amazon and the bombas co-founder said um, i've actually reached out to them to say hey i think you're making a mistake about amazon let's let's talk 
Uh, so if, you, if anyone that, that represents Bombas or has any kind of ownership, please talk to me after watching this day drinking episode um, or Drinking Buddies episode uh, because I want to help. But they say, we don't want to use Amazon because we want to own all the customer data. Yes, they're Amazon's customer when you access them via Amazon. But you have so much data there and you've actually got a subset of people that aren't even looking at your website that you can now access. Yeah. You need to take advantage of those people because they're there. It's a way to generate revenue and you can do it on your own terms. Yes, you're going to give up some costs to Amazon because you're accessing their customer base. But it doesn't mean you're any less connected and you've got so many opportunities to tell your brand story. You got to get on there and you got to do it for, from, for the very minimally, uh, for the very minimal aspect of just telling your brand story. If you're not telling your brand story on there, you're missing out. So check this out. I, I, there are a lot of individual contributors out there. There are a lot of people that work in a corporate and they're like, yo, I need to I need a side hustle or like that's what I'm here. What I'm seeing right now is that. <clears throat> yeah. One of the, and I think this is going to be. I think side hustles are going to explode. We thought side hustles were a big deal before. They're going yeah. to really be a big deal right now because because people are seeing how vulnerable they really are. Right? They thought their corporate right. job, a month ago they thought their their job was like secure and everything's all good. And then a week later, their whole damn life changed. So you know, is Amazon and creating a business or that's a side hustle business on Amazon? Is it a good deal? Is it a good idea? Is it something that that you see that that's that's a good way to transition into entrepreneurship what's your take on that and if and if so give give our folks give them some um advice on how you do that the right way okay it is the best way to create a side hustle while you're doing something else hold up yo say it again it is the best starting a business on Amazon is the best side hustle that you can create because there's so much that you can do on the web. You don't ever have to leave your home. There are people that are generating tens of millions of dollars. And this is an entrepreneur porn. This is real stuff. Um, I don't know if my daughter's in the house. So I don't know if I can say shit or not, but it is real. It's yeah, real. Legit <laughs> shit. If you, um, so people, people are generating a lot of money doing it, but you, you never have to leave your home to create this business, but you do need smarts. You do need to know and understand the market in order to do it. But it's one of the best side hustles because you can start the business based on your knowledge and your skill set, or even a freelancer that you were hired. So there's a lot of times when we'll consult with a client and we're not the most expensive uh, agency out there, but we're not the cheapest. Yeah. And we know, okay, you may not be the best fit for us. So we actually have a second service model where we serve people at a less expensive rate. Um, but it's a little bit more hands on for that client. But even then, if we can't help you, you could hire a freelancer to help you to do some of the things that you need to do to really get Amazon up and running. But you can, you can do as much as you can. And when it comes to sales, Amazon, if you're using fulfillment by Amazon, they're fulfilling your orders. You've got a lot of things that are running that you can check in on a regular basis. So if you've got a day job and you're running some advertising campaigns, you can go and look at those at night and just check those on a, on a regular basis and get your brain up and running. But you have to change your expectations. A lot of people go into this thinking, oh, I'm gonna invest a thousand dollars. I'm gonna make a million dollars this year. No, you're not. You're not gonna make a million dollars. If you can invest a you know, thousand, two thousand dollars and turn that into a $50,000 uh, revenue generating business this year, you have succeeded. So check this out. So check this out. Let's use that as an example. I work for wherever, wherever I'm working. I got it. I got a thousand bucks. Yep. And I want to start an Amazon, a business on Amazon. What the hell should, should I be selling like baby pacifiers? What the hell should I do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so one, uh, that is, you, that is a category that's baby category can be successful, but it can also be very daunting because a lot of products that when I talk about different approaches, you've got the reseller. So they're going and just kind of looking at generic goods and then they're going and they're reselling them. And then you've got your brands who already have a, a set brand. Um, like if you are, there's a company here in Cincinnati that we represent called Hoist and they are a, an electrolyte beverage company. You bought some Hoist. I'm almost. Yes, I did, Michael. Brett, take me back. I need to know. I don't know anything. I got a thousand bucks. What the hell should I sell on Amazon? It's gonna make me some money. 
So you've got those legitimate brands like Hoist that are trying to access Amazon. And then you've got these private label people that are, cr that are creating products that might have certain specifications uh, that you place on them, but are already, uh, they're already kind of filling a need and you're kind of capitalizing on that need that's there. So when it comes to starting something from scratch and any business that I've had um, ha has, has been started while I've been doing something else. So yes. when I started my e-commerce business 10 years ago, I was working a full-time job that I hated and I was teaching drum lessons because I was so desperate to get the hell out of there that I was like, I'm going to do anything that I can. And I didn't have a kid. So I was like, okay, I don't see my wife for a year. That really sucks. But, you know, sacrifice for, for the long run. And she's great. So, I mean, of course I want to, I want to see her. Um, but when it, when it comes to just like, okay, I have a business and I want to, or I have an idea and I yeah. we get the side hustle going. Um, you got to think first about product. Yeah. So it, this becomes hot right now. What's hot on Amazon right now? Um, I got well, a thousand bucks. I only got a thousand bucks, man. I can't take chances. Like, what should I be? What, here's what, the, here's what, where I think what? people get it wrong. They go for the sexy stuff. They go for beauty. They go for something. Uh, they go for all the things that are are cool and awesome and look great. But you can create a business that actually helps you to sustain your life and you're selling uh, gloves or yes. washing dishes, who cares? Yes. So, cares so, what you're doing? so I think that's the, what I'm after. Stay away from it. So you're saying stay away from the, from the sexy. And I'm sorry if your daughter is in a place, but you, you know, this is you know what what sexy means. Means. stay away from the sexy shit and yeah. let's get to the, to the, Necessities like basic shit, right? Like the basic turn something basic into not a commodity, but turn it into something that people are buying. That's a lifestyle. Yeah. So maybe someone wants to spend less money on on gloves, or maybe they just want gloves that are a different print and that look cool. There's ways to go and, and research that kind of stuff on Amazon. You can start to so for, first, it's looking at product and saying, okay, what product do I want to sell? And you can go and think about things that you like and then research stuff and go to Amazon and see, are other people selling this thing? Yeah. The next step, uh, one of the reasons I was, I was talking about sourcing your product, and that's actually kind of a complicated issue right now because- um, Okay, you, hold on, pause up. Your girl, Brittany, has stepped hello? in to save the day. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's like, shut the hell up, Michael. Grocery category. That's what's up, Brittany. Okay, so if you if you have a grocery brand right now, people are seeing huge, huge growth. We have a client who grew five hundred percent because they were in the grocery category. But to me, to me, that's not something. That's something that's that's already in existence. Mm -hmm. so if you're wanting to start something from scratch, creating a, a grocery product is something that's hot right now, but in six weeks when things cool down, people might already have enough organic uh, chia seeds. People might already have um, enough uh, mixed nuts or whatever things they're buying in the grocery category. So, so my recommendation, uh, who cares about that Brittany chick? She's great, but um, <laughs> my, my recommendation is is look at a product carrier that you might even be, uh, you might even be interested in, and you feel like you can kind of hone in and know. Like I know this market, and I can create a product, or I can sell a product that's going to fit this need. For the longest time, uh, I'm huge into fitness, and I was. Michael, starting listen, listen, bro! I got a thousand dollars just burning a hole in my okay, pocket. Okay. Shit I'm about shit. Hole in your pocket. Money. Where Where do I put my money? First, you need to invest in, uh, and you can actually get a free trial from a lot of these, but you can look at a keyword research tool that helps you analyze information on Amazon. That's, give us one. Okay, one is Scope by Seller Labs. That's what's up. Another one is Jungle Scout. Another okay. one is Helium 10. Another one is Merchant Words. Okay. And from a very, very basic level, before you put this thousand dollars somewhere, start to do some test searches and see, okay, are Argyle socks something that has a lot of search searches going on? If something's got a hundred thousand searches a month, there's some potential there to, to make some sales. All those numbers are kind of estimated around a month, 30 days. If you've got something that's got a million searches, You've got a ton of demand there. Now, the second thing that you want to counter that with is how many search results are you getting? Mm -hmm. So 
If you're getting 60,000 search results, when you search for whatever keyword you're looking for, you've got a fair amount of people that are trying to get onto that first page. So you've got some competition. So that's where, if you can just block out some of those sexy categories like beauty supplements, all those other things, if you're wanting something quick, um, look for things that just start looking around your house. Like what are things that are especially renewable too? So like um, creating a better sponge. I'm, I don't know why I'm focusing on the dishes right now, but create a better sponge that's, that's at a better cost and that maybe has a better efficacy for what it's doing and create a pack and get a better price point for, for that item and start to sell, start to sell that item on Amazon. People are 50% more likely to buy a product from a brand they don't know on Amazon than on any other site. So that means run out. If you had a day drinking website and someone saw your day drinking shirt, they would be 50% more likely to buy that day drinking shirt on Amazon than they would even be on your site. And that's why you want to tap into that. So you so you look at scope or you look oh, at jungle. Can we put day drinking shirts on Amazon? Let's do it. I don't I mean, I don't know. I don't know why we, we have it. Now, here's the thing. The peril peril category is another sexy category. And you've got some great shirts. I've got the I'm a businessman shirt. And that's yes, a great shirt. But now you have to show up on Amazon. Brittany, where's your Brittany? I need you to request one from me. What's up, Brittany? Brittany needs an I'm a businesswoman shirt. Um, but I <laughs> Brittany said, but I'm hungry. She's <laughs> hungry. Hey, at least shout she's out real quick. Suzanne, our friend, our mutual friend, Suzanne Spanner. What's up, man? There you uh, go. What's up, Suzanne? Thanks for checking in. Yeah. Um, let's give let's give her let's 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 go ahead and, and, and click it up for her because boom because um she she's really the reason why we know each other. I think she is why we know each other. Suzanne has created an incredible group called Mentorpreneur. And it's not a, a bunch of bullshit entrepreneurs getting together saying, hey, man, you can do great things and great things in your life and all good things. And I got your blessings and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> People that are showing up and saying, hey, man, I know how to I know how to play that game. That BS. Hey, man, you can do great things. <laughs> you can do great things and the sun shines 10, 10 days out of nine days out of 10. But you got to have that rainy day to make sure you get in the non sunshine days or whoever. Who, who cares what people are saying? But she's created a group of people like you who are legit business owners or people that are in the business world yes, sir. that are out there saying, hey, here's my experience. Can you get something from that experience? Yep. And I'm saying, hey, here's my experience as a business owner. Yep. Here's my experience as an entrepreneur. And here's what I'm getting out of it. And what I can tell you is community is the number one thing that I needed as an entrepreneur. And I didn't even know it. When I was when I had my own e-commerce business and I was doing stuff in my basement at this house, I was so secluded and I was so alone. And it took me to get out to an event in Cincinnati to go and say, Oh, wow. Other people are having a hard time as an entrepreneur. I had no idea because people are stupid yeah. and self centered. That's what business in, the, in bourbon is all about. You know that. All the platforms. Hey, I got a question for you because this is coming from Sarah Ann Donald. Shout out, Sarah Ann Donald. Thank you. Her question is Is it realistic to develop a whole new product with a small initial investment, such as 1000 Or is it the idea, or is the idea to rebrand a common product? that can be bought wholesale to get experience with selling a product on Amazon. You can read that too. So tell me what, tell, let's answer. What an insightful her. question. What was her name? I can't see it yet on the comments. Sarah Ann Donald. Sarah Ann Donald, what a great question. And you are someone like Christopher that I'm going to connect with uh, personally after this because it's such an insightful question. The reason I'm connecting with Christopher Reed is because he's a great drinker. And <laughs> For being a great drinker, okay? Let's just be honest about why we're connecting with people here. Cheers to that. Cheers. He's on his 15th glass, and I'm still on my second glass of, of Weller Special Reserve. So, <laughs> All right, did you get Sarah Ann's question? But it's it's 1030 for him, though. I believe he said that. So it's still- I know, but let's just pretend it's like 130, and he's just like a baller that's like, I finished my work at 10, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, so Sarah Ann, that's a great question. I think when it comes to anything, what are your expectations? If you can create a new product in, in, a, in a niche that you believe is, the, the thing is, 
the niche that you're getting into, is there potential for it to grow? If there's not potential for it to scale, why would you get into it? That's That would be my, my initial thing. So if you can look at a niche and say, okay, I think in the next six months to a year, just based on what I know about the US, these kinds of products are gonna be, and that's why I tell people to get into something that they might know a little bit, kind of try and get a little bit ahead of the curve and say, I think that this product is gonna be uh, even more popular in six months. I think it's gonna be even more popular in nine months. Um, so if you can get ahead of the curve and you've got time to wait, create your product there because you can get out in front and then you can be the one that that's leading stuff. When it comes to uh, creating something that is more of a brand in a, inside of a commodity, I think that's the more traditional way of doing stuff is people are looking for items that kind of already have some buzz, but don't have a lot of penetration and they're going in and then they're creating a product that's going to sell really well. So if you've got time and that's the one thing that is an expectation that I think needs to change for people, especially solopreneurs that are looking to get into Amazon, change your expectations, start something and go as long as you can without taking a paycheck from that business and invest that money back into the business. So if you can work your full-time job and maybe your spouse or your partner, your significant other, your partner, whatever, helps you with some of that. My wife helped me uh, put packages together uh, when I was working the job that I, that I hated uh, in her office um, and helped me, helped me do a lot of things initially uh, because we're, we're in it to win it. We're in it together. And so she, she knew that that, I don't know if she knew the investment was maybe going to pay off a decade later, but she knew that, uh, she believed in me and she believed that I was doing something that was worthwhile. So if you can, um, invest in that new product up front, if you believe there's going to be something there, then there's a ton of potential for that to take off you know, maybe in 12 months, in 24 months, just don't expect it to happen right away. But that kind of slow scaling, that's ideally what everybody could do. Yeah. Everybody could get in and create a business and over the next two to three years, get to a place where you're generating six figures. Now, is your business gonna be a million dollar business or a multi-million dollar business? No, it's highly unlikely unless you have the means from capital, either from the business that you've started or capital from another job, or maybe you're look. There's a, a ton of Amazon businesses that are getting injections from VC companies or PE companies. Yeah. But if you if you have no additional resources for capital, start a business and let it grow slowly over time, and get the right people involved in your business: a freelancer, a consultant, uh, a smaller agency that can take on the project at a, at, a, at a lesser cost, and grow that thing sustainably over time. Uh, I I kind of see it similar to okay, wrap. <laughs> I want you and 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 uh, who was that? That was Sarah Ann. Who was who asked that question? Ooh. Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann something. I want Sarah Ann and you to connect. Anyone that has in-depth oh. questions for Michael, please connect. Anyone that's what's watches, please connect. Michael Melissa Little. Melissa Little says her book will be out this year. Melissa, let's talk about what authors can do on Amazon. Whoa. It's possible, but it takes time. That's the biggest thing. It's money and time. If you can, if you can take the time that it requires, the money is something that you can inject over the long term. It's an investment. Yo, hold on. This is I like this question because Tommy came in. He said, How do you position your brand on Amazon without killing your margins? How do you position your brand on Amazon? I, I mean, you buy so, from China <laughs> six months ago. <laughs> Because you, you can't be right now. So you need to get in the DeLorean and you need to go <laughs> six months prior and you need to you need to teleport to the right time. I think what you want to do, a lot of people have that um, view that Amazon is all about commodities, but just know that the market is changing. We have a client who has a, a men's everyday carry brand. It's called Everyman. Go and look up Everyman on Amazon. They've got pens that are $35. $35 that sell incredibly well. If you can position yourself as a lifestyle brand, so not a commodity, a pen is a commodity, right? But if you can position yourself as a lifestyle brand, people are buying into that lifestyle. Like I wanna be all minimalist. I wanna be, I want really nice stuff, but I want it to be very, very minimalist. 
People are willing to pay a premium for that. So my answer to that question is create a lifestyle brand. It could be based off a commodity. You could have a lifestyle brand that's that's all kitchen gloves or sponges or things like that. But create a lifestyle brand that people are buying into the image. People are buying into the, hey, I connect with this lifestyle and you'll set your product apart. And yes, you're gonna have people that are gonna try and copy you, but you're gonna be able to have a price point that's two, three times higher than everybody else because they bought into your lifestyle and that's not right. into the commodity that is the product. That's what's up. Hey, I wanna give a shout out and sister, please. I am such a stickler for names and I hate pronouncing names incorrectly. Um, but my girl, Agye Ekundayo, if I'm, if if I did it right, please say, right now you're awesome. If I didn't, correct me, because it, it matters to me. Anyway, she's got a book out, and her book is on Amazon. Um, hindsight is 2020, the second edition. So make sure you reach out to Michael, too, because I don't know how your, how your sales are on your book. Maybe he can help out with that or give you some direction. Um, but she, category is very different on Amazon. He's been hanging in with us this whole this whole stream. I appreciate you so much. So what, like, she, she, she's drinking, she said she was drinking um peach. She was on Jim Bean Peach, and now she's on that Apple Crown. Oh, <laughs> don't tell me you have Apple Crown back I, there. I think I do. <laughs> Melissa, I will I will connect with you because books are very, very different on Amazon. The thing is, when you're targeting consumer behavior for something like kitchen gloves or a sponge or even jewelry, you're looking for generic keywords. And when someone is looking for a book, they're oftentimes looking for a specific book like Harry Potter or JC Cervantes or something that's in that same mythical fiction category for nine to 12 year olds and to target that more specifically. Melissa, I will be in touch with you. Okay, I can go with AJ. What do you get with? It's ten dollars, thirty percent of five site wars. AJ, AJ. So, so, so AJ uh, again has the book out on Amazon. Make sure y'all check for that. Hindsight is twenty twenty. The second edition is on Amazon right now. Go get at it. I do. I do not have any crown apple. I used to, <laughs> but that shit is pretty good. It's pretty tasty. I'm gonna put y'all onto something though that y'all all need to get. Oh, pineapple rum. Dude, I've been getting into rum recently. Plantation pineapple rum, to be specific. It's good. It is delicious. Okay, so there's a brand called Florida Cana that's yeah. Cuban rum. Or no, no, it's from Nicaragua. It's from Nicaragua. And they've got um, like, a, like an eight-year or seven-year aged rum, nice yeah. caramel color. It's not quite as sweet as bourbon, but you can drink it almost like bourbon. And getting a, a, a bottle of, of rum in, from Nicaragua that's aged for eight years, it's like 22 bucks. It's ridiculous. Man, so here's the thing, guys. Here's the spirit guy talking. Rum is the thing. Like, you can, right now, whiskey, aged whiskey is really expensive. Yep. And rum, not so much. Rum is delicious. Let's give a shot. Christopher is asking about Jack Honey. What do you think about Jack Honey? I, I had Jack Honey. You what? You love Jack Honey? I've never had Jack Honey. Um. I've had New Jack Swing. <laughs> Show us the New Jack Swing. <laughs> Show us. I'm a huge black. I, remember that. I know you don't like R&B, but I, I'm obsessed with R&B. Yeah. Major R&B guy. Me, not so much. Not so much. Uh, drinker, Robert huh? says good Canadian whiskey. Man, I like a good Canadian whiskey, too. Matter of fact, Robert, shout out Canada. You see this hat right here? This came from Toronto. This is, let me shout these guys out. Shout out to Cher Jones. You probably saw Cher Jones when she I did. That, didn't you? Yeah. This Cher, is Maverick, Maverick Brewing Company in Toronto. Um, shout out to them. So you see that. I, I don't even know if Robert, maybe you saw the Maple Leaf, but that's where that comes from. So yeah, shout out Canadian whiskey. I love Canadian whiskey too. Christopher Gray, what? I don't drink much Canadian whiskey. The, the thing about rum is, I'm going to make a prediction right now. This is going to make me zero money. But if, yeah. if I actually call this, people are going to think it's really, really cool. So I'm going to do it. There is a cocktails are, are, of course, getting bigger and bigger right now. The original daiquiri, the original daiquiri that I believe came from Cuba is a, uh, a white rum, lime juice, and a little bit of simple syrup. 
That is the original daiquiri. That drink is making a comeback and you are gonna see it show up in places like King and Duke and other places that are not the East or West Coast over the next 12 months. It's gonna make a comeback. It's, you think so? It's a, and it's a super classic drink. It's like the margarita. Margarita is what? Um, when I make it, it's tequila, Grand Marnier, uh, typically agave and some lime juice. But it's really, really simple ingredients. So getting the measurements right is super, super important. I make daiquiris at home all the time. And I'm not talk, talking about strawberry daiquiris. <laughs> hey, shout out real quick. Listen, Marvin says spice rum too. Marvin, I got a spice rum for you. Captain Morgan's is spice, right? It is. Um, so Brittany and Marvin, here is my favorite spiced rum. This is Brinley Gold spiced rum. It is delicious. Trust me. Florida Kanye, for anyone that's looking for a good age rum, and Florida Kanye 18 year is like 35 bucks. That's a pretty, it's a pretty good price. I need, to, I need to pick that up. All right. Adam says Bushmills Black Bush. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. You're stupid. All right. Um uh never, Jack never and Beam, Beam Honey is good. So all right, he co-signs for Beam Honey. I don't think I've ever had Jack Beam Honey, but no, I, I've had I, barrel proof. That shit is for real. The Jack Beam barrel proof? Barrel proof. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's like I could rock with it. 120%. You have a sip and you're like, whoa, this room is looking real good, but why is it so movie? <laughs> Adam says he's into the Irish Irish whiskeys. Adam, tell me, what do I have? Yeah. yeah. I have so much shit. This is stupid. But I'm the business and bourbon guy. I got to have, have something. Back in the studio, I have, Adam, let me know if you approve. I have... Um, Ah, be right back. I feel like I've seen it. I feel like I've seen that bottle. So this episode of uh, Drinking Buddies is brought to you by Michael Marr, Richard uh, Richards. Mr. Richards initially said my name was Maher, but it's actually Marr. That doesn't make <laughs> sense, but that is how you say my name. Telemores. I, I said it more than once, so I'm sure that I, I've said Marr and I've said Marr. Marr. <laughs> oh. I know. Tealing. Oh, I was tealing. Okay, yeah. Adam, do you approve? Tealing. I hope you do because. Did you have that when you went over to the UK? This came from Dublin. Oh, okay. You had that when you were over in Ireland recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I bought that from at, from the distillery, actually. That is my uh, heritage. <laughs> the drinking. <laughs> I, said, I, I need rehab. Do I really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're good, man. You're good. Until you're selling your diabetic test strips on Craigslist, you're fine. I think <laughs> that that's the line of demarcation. It's like, okay, once you're doing, once you've done that, okay, I'm not doing. That's that. when you need to start reeling it back in. My brother was drinking a ton up to that point and is now a recovering alcoholic, um, and so he's he's doing great now. Good but but when but when you get to that point, that's when you know you kind of need to reel it back in. It's yeah, kind of a little bit too far ahead of you yeah. <laughs> when you're selling your test trips. That you I, get. I don't think we're quite that far. We're just a couple of buddies having a couple of drinks, having a fun. Like we've gone an hour, and guys, I don't care. It's the best so hour I've ever spent. Yeah. So what? So like, so <laughs> I appreciate you guys that have hung in there for the whole period of time. For those of you guys that popped in and out, appreciate you guys too. This whole thing, understand? I do a lot of educating. I do a lot of content that's focused on edge this is this is just having some fun we're gonna have a couple drinks you guys got questions we're gonna ask answer your questions i bring in on cool people like michael that have great experience in their vertical you want to ask them stuff you want to connect to them i just want really the whole purpose of this i wanted to introduce the world to some of my buddies that are virtual because we do this business and bourbon thing and business and bourbon it has to be live you yeah. have to be sitting there with me, um, and we have to right. But that, which is awesome, and and there's so much authenticity in that. But it doesn't allow me to expose the world to so many dope ass people that I know. This does. So we're just gonna chit and chit chat, and and then you guys can connect. And hopefully there's some business and there's some synergy, and that's awesome. But beyond that, it's just a way for me to hang out with my buddies at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, it's enable. It's enables us to have drinks. 
without actually having to be in a physical locale. And let me tell you, I feel like I'm in Atlanta right now. I don't know what that means, but I feel like I'm in Atlanta right now. No, it's not quite the same because you'd be ordered. We'd be calling the Uber. We like, <laughs> let's get the Uber back to the hotel. I need a quarantine Uber right now. Okay. Yeah. So I gotta I, I, so when I go and stay in Atlanta though. I got a place already already lined up. So have you seen my house? No, but I would, of course I would stay there. Are you inviting? I, I have like a gazillion bedrooms. It's all good. Like yes, we're, hey, we're and, and uh, your wife and I are gonna listen to some punk rock music you, because. I'm big into punk rock and she likes Goblin. So of course I'm gonna listen to some Goblin. You guys will get along on a ridiculous level. Anyway, hey, okay. Go. go ahead and wrap it, man. Melissa, Melissa, you on ATL? That's what's up. John, no, thank you for hanging in there with us, bro. Um on a beer. Christopher. Christopher, my guy. Christopher's my guy. Make sure you guys connect. Christopher, you, you have crushed it with participation in this. I am so thankful. Yes. Chris, Christopher is our MVP. MVP, <laughs> that's right. That's right. He's talking about raw bourbon. What I else? understand this. This is a little bit selfish. I will agree. Because for me, like at the end of the day, it's oh, I get to talk to a friend and hang out and hopefully, you know, have some cool people pop in and pop out that want to talk to us or want to ask questions. But that's that's all this is. There's no ulterior motive other than that. Hey, have a good time. So thank you, Michael, for hanging in here, man, and, and sitting and chitting chat chit chit chatting with me. Well, reach out to me for a business sponsorship. Well, I wish they would. They need to call me first. They should call you way before they call me, but I like Prince, so I'm just saying. Hey guys, keep your make sure that you stay tuned. Uh, business and bourbon. I'm telling, I'm only telling the people that are on that. that Take the time to listen to this thing. Business and bourbon virtual, the global business. It's happening. It's happening. We're going to have this massive event, business and bourbon virtual event. Um, so we're planning it and it'll be within the next few weeks. And we're expecting at least 500 people on this bad boy. So stay tuned. If you want to be part of it, if you want to help promote it, let us know. Um, that's it. Michael, you want to leave them with something? Marvin Reed had a quick question. He said, what do you think about the companies that provide white label products for Amazon sellers? Are there anything to look out for or avoid? Uh, Marvin, just connect with me and we'll, and, we'll, and we'll talk about that. What I want to leave people with, um, I am I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful that I'm so blessed. But even in the midst of adversity, I trust and I believe that God is going to provide for me. And I'm so, uh, I'm just, I'm just every single day I'm trying to find uh, more reasons to be grateful. And when you look for those reasons to be grateful, they are there. Um, if, if there's any way, if there's anybody out there right now that is struggling and there's a way that I can help you, um, reach out to me. I would love to be able to connect you with someone um, or I might know someone uh, that I know there are people that have been laid off from larger agencies or larger companies and you're looking for, uh, for a role or something like that. I, I want to help you any, any way that I can help you. I, I can't physically go out and help every single person. Um, but I've got that heart to give. So if I can help you and I can put you I I into connection with someone, let me do that and just continue to find reasons to be grateful. That's, that's it. That's all I got. My man. Ronell's Ronell's my dude. He day drinks. I <laughs> day drink. I night drink. I middle of the night drink. So, so the word, understand, guys, again, day drinking is a podcast. We don't really day drink during the day. I can't get work done if I day drink all the time. <laughs> we couldn't get much accomplished if we did. All right, but we do at five. So, hey, guys, next one, I don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe not. I don't know. Dep depends on how I'm feeling, but stay tuned. Make sure you check the check my my feed, and, and you know I, I'll always pop earlier in the day if we're going to do a, a a drinking buddies episode. And make sure you connect with Michael and check for his upcoming podcast that will be coming out. Well, he will be able he will be sharing all the secrets of how you kick ass on Amazon and beyond. Yep, my brother, I appreciate you. Thank Peace you, sir. Guys.